about a year ago, I was diagnosed with ADHD, also known as Awesome Disorder. Hot dog. Uh, no, it stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder. Yeah, I know. However, since I've begun to tame my ADHD, I notice there's still something. Something different about how I interact with the world. And I've always felt that something ever since I was a kid. And looking back on it now, I think that something is autism. Autism, or autism spectrum disorder, is a developmental disorder that impacts the nervous system and impairs the ability to communicate and interact. At least that's the, like, definition. Quick disclaimer, as you watch this video and learn about my specific symptoms, keep in mind that, yeah, you could be somewhere on the spectrum too. But please also understand that these symptoms are a lot like ingredients to a recipe. So just because you've got some tomatoes in boiling water doesn't necessarily mean your brain's making spaghetti. It could be making ravioli, or lasagna, or any other pasta. Wait, but- And if you took this metaphor literally, you might be autistic. So, growing up, I hated doing the dishes because of the smells and sounds and slimes. I was obsessed with everything having to do with cats and would often dominate conversations just to talk about my interests. I found maintaining eye contact to be very unnatural and uncomfortable. And I'd cry at the sound of automatic flushing toilets. And honestly, I still find the sound very overwhelming. Hey. But the response to this was always, you're being dramatic. Or you talk too much. Or you're so sensitive. And to be fair, that's what it looked like on the outside. Who doesn't think dirty dishes are gross? Who isn't passionate about their interests? Who didn't find jeans to be itchy and refuse to wear them until their parents forced them to in seventh grade? Oh, just me then? Hmm, fair enough. My point is, a lot of autistic behaviors and reactions can fly under the radar, you know? When the criteria for recognizing autism was first created, it was rooted in very old, outdated, and prejudiced perspectives. It only considered the experience of young white boys. Therefore, due to social constructs like, girls are so emotional, my supposed overreactions to things were just chalked up to the F I got on my birth. And I can only imagine how much worse it is for people who aren't white like me. So for a while, I internalized this feedback. It felt like the phrase, just be yourself, applied to everyone except me, specifically. But newsflash, in case you haven't noticed, I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. I don't fit in, and I don't want to fit in. Have you ever seen me without this stupid hoodie on? F At times where I wasn't sure how to respond or react properly, I'd study how others would act and try acting more like them. More normal. This is called masking, which sometimes worked, and sometimes it didn't. <laughs> Back when I was 11, I was on this weekend retreat kind of thing for church, but I didn't have many close friends in my youth group because they found me weird and didn't really like interacting with me. I also didn't have many friends in school. In fact, I was getting bullied for unknown reasons. Oh, wow. Okay. Point is, I didn't know how to interact with people properly, but I knew mimicking how others interacted with me kind of worked. So we get to the lake, and there's this giant cross in the middle. We get out of the van, and this one kid grabs his bags and says, Ooh, I can't wait to get inside. And he runs ahead of us. So I, mimicking the kinds of things that worked for other kids, decided to say, And I can't wait to see you trip and fall. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those things that like keeps me up at night. So yeah. I didn't understand why being myself wasn't allowed or why copying other people wasn't working, so I tried doing nothing. I did my best to quiet my brain and hide the person I was, which was so easy. Oh, all right, that's good to hear. Oh, no, 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 I was being sarcastic. Oh. Oh, man. It's okay. Dry humor and sarcasm sometimes goes over my head and right into my fragile heart, too. <laughs> Dude, did you just destroy my bed? <laughs> yes. I hate you. Wait, what? You do? You mean it? What? No, no I, I was joking. Why would you joke about that? Well, if I explain it, it's not funny anymore. It wasn't that funny to begin with. Dude. So yeah. All my life, I've felt like my brain was shaped like a bean, but everyone else's was shaped like... like a legume. Which I think is different? 
difference between bean and legume? Okay, yeah, beans are legumes, but not all legumes are beans. For example, peas, lentils, and peanuts are not beans, but are legumes. Yeah. This world was made for tough nuts. And I am a squishy little chickpea. And sometimes I could swing it, tossing my garbanzos into recipes and hoping things worked out. But sometimes I couldn't, because I can't. Like, how would you feel if you bit into your Reese's cup and found out it was a fucking bean cup? You're gonna get mad at the beans? Do you think they want to be there? Look at them. This, this, this is what hell looks like. I would know, because no matter what I do differently or how hard I try, this is my brain. This is how it works. Fucking bean cup. So life can really suck if you're atypical. People look at you weird, treat you differently, infantilize you, ignore you, take advantage of you, or even hurt you. However, something important I should point out is there's nothing wrong with me or anyone who is neurodivergent, no matter where they are on the spectrum or how you perceive them. There's nothing about us to be cured. Like I said, the world just isn't made by or for beans like us. Hmm. I don't know, Illy. You don't seem autistic. Wait, what? What do you mean I don't seem autistic? Well, you don't act autistic. You have a job, you talk to people, and you can take care of yourself. So you think autistic people can't be smart or capable? No, 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 it's not what I'm saying. It's just you don't look autistic. So you think autistic people can't be hot? What? No, I just mean- So you don't think I'm hot? No, it just- you're- you're great. It's just, I don't think you're autistic. Like, my cousin is autistic. He's nonverbal, he has to wear headphones everywhere so he doesn't get overstimulated, and he really, really likes trains. And you're nothing like him. Well, yeah, of course I'm nothing like him. We're two completely different people. That's why it's called autism spectrum disorder, not you act like my little cousin disorder. <laughs> I'm on one end of the spectrum where I don't need assistance caring for myself. Does that mean I'm not autistic? No, I still experience a lot of sensory problems that interfere with my life on a daily basis, especially when it comes to touch and sound. If I'm in a situation that's too noisy for me or in pants that are too itchy, I know that if I can't remove myself from this overstimulating issue or find a way to cope through it, I could shut down and become nonverbal. And then you'll see me act autistic, which happens and it sucks. It feels like my body locks up and my brain goes offline. But the worst part is, to everyone else, I just look like this. Good job, Alyssa. You're being so well behaved. Honestly, what I really needed back then was a pair of noise-canceling headphones and some gloves to do the dishes. But I didn't know that. My parents didn't know that. My teachers didn't know that. Because all they saw was this over-talkative, forgetful, distracted kid finally sitting still and doing as they're told. Whether we understand it or not, though, some autistic people need more or less accommodations than others. And that doesn't make them more or less autistic. Or faking it, even. Like, you might only need glasses to see better when you're reading. Meanwhile, I need glasses all the time to see anything at all. But that doesn't mean you're faking it for attention. Again, these nuances among individual disabled experiences just highlight all the things we need to change to make the world more understanding and accessible to everyone. Bean or legume? Well, still, you shouldn't self-diagnose. Autism is serious. It's not some internet trend. Yeah, I agree. Self-diagnosing yourself or faking a disability just to take advantage of the systems in place is really scummy. However, policing disabled people via vigilante justice is not the solution you think it is. Because disabled people deal with enough unnecessary crap from abled people. And doctors, sadly. If it turns out you're not autistic, but you do find training your dog to lay on your chest helps curb your sensory-related panic attacks, please do that. You're not taking away any resources from anyone else by simply taking care of yourself. And honestly, if you don't believe I fit the DSM-5 criteria for autism spectrum disorder after hearing all the things I listed about my own individual autistic experience, I don't care. Because again, when the standards for autism have historically only represented quirked up white boys with a little bit of swag and a special interest in trains, you're gonna miss quite a lot of people. Whenever I feel imposter syndrome towards my place on the spectrum, I've just been telling myself, well, if I was a little boy, would a mother use this opportunity to lean over and explain to her wide-eyed child what autism is? And usually, the answer is yes.
I think they would. Or better yet, if you think you may be autistic and want an informed opinion, talk to your autistic friends about it. That's what I did. That's why I made this video. Thank you, Kit, for helping me with the script. Mm, but I don't... But I don't have any autistic friends, you say. And to that I say, I'm pretty sure you do. <laughs> but if not, I encourage you to find a safe online community that is just as jazzed about your special interests as you are. So with that, thank you for watching my videos. Like it if you liked it so I know. Subscribe to see more stories. Please watch my video about Cats the Musical. And as always, stay safe. Bonjour mes petits haricots verts. Bienvenue à mon end card. <laughs> I've been brushing up on my French because I've been <laughs> sick. <laughs> I'm sick. <laughs> I'm fine. I got la peste, but I'm, I'm fine. Chocolate tastes like garbage now. Only chocolate. Like straight up sewage. But I'll be fine. <laughs> I'm, uh, I can't go to Momocon now. That sucks. I was really looking forward to that. I'm trying to stay good so I can go to VidCon next month. Go to Vid come, come see me at VidCon, please. If not, that's fine. Um, anyway, that's it. That's it. Thanks for watching my video. Bye. I love you. Mwah.